Hey guys, it's Joel with Headhunters Customs here, and we're doing our final look at the anti-impact resin. As I said, I was going to give it like a month to determine uh, the quality of this stuff using my arm that the previous resin I was using. It ultimately had a tearing issue, and uh, I think it was weird. It's like sometimes it tears, sometimes it wouldn't tear, and I think what that meant for that resin was that it was like so flexible that... <laughs> It would do whatever you wanted it to, but if once you got it around the item or whatever, if it was too big on the inside, it would just, over time, cause it to tear. And so I think that's what I was dealing with. Um, so, when you have uh, a prototype that already isn't, like, the best design, I hate to say it, but I designed it all myself, so I'm just beating myself up. But when you have something that's not, like, uh, perfect already then if you use a resin that doesn't break under the pressure of your not very good prototype then you actually have a really quality resin there that's that's the way i'm looking at it so this one then was based off a design that i don't think i've ever actually had them split um in the holes um or along the back so I must have designed that pretty good from the get-go. But I just wanted to point out then. So if you're looking at so if you're looking at this one, that's the way it that's the way it looked. Um perfect. This is what it looks like after I had put an arm in there. So you see that I had it so nice and tight that there was like paint wear from the arm. Um it's kinda but like there is no wearing of the resin anywhere in this like the only resin that you see worn around the outside is damage from me trying to remove the arm <laughs> it was so stuck in there I, I tried the dry heating method and that didn't work so i had to like really heat up water like really hot to get that to work uh so that's what i used to finally pry the arm out but it held on to that thing tight and the arm it was nice and tight the whole time so um this is non-mixed this is just the anti-impact resin i think in that regards since i'm using mixed stuff now it should have a little bit more give thankfully <laughs> but still shouldn't have any of the tearing um i'm um, or whatever i don't know in some ways it has to have enough give to like actually pull the arm out you don't want to like have it stuck in there forever right so here is the arm that was also pure anti-impact resin now we had that issue real quick from the beginning so one thing that did happen was when I stuck the bicep and hand into there and I twisted and I kept twisting and I kept twisting it ended up you know breaking off so that actually was one downside um, something I don't know maybe I couldn't get it in enough um, or whatever I mean that does seem to be part of part of the issue does seem to be you couldn't go in enough for some reason maybe that was a heating issue maybe that is on me that it did that but um, so it's still it's nice and stiff actually well you know what though this is in all the way and it doesn't want to turn so um, okay there we go I had to loosen it so I don't know maybe maybe in this regard um, the arm once again being imperfect uh, using just straight anti-impact resin. It didn't split, it didn't crack, however. Um, it also didn't accept um, the ability to shove something in there that didn't really have, that was too small to go in there, or too big to go in there, so it didn't allow that. So, we go to the uh, user-suggested resin. Actually, let's, let's swap over to, okay, this is using the um, resin that I had issues with of splitting all the time and anti-impact and uh i don't know it actually is it's kind of smooth um you can see me play with that it just unfortunately it seemed to when i was doing some stuff it seemed to like have some shaving issues so it's like it did introduce a level of brittleness that you don't really want still so i think i think that's out but it was a better result than what I was doing, right? So t the, the flexible resin plus the TH72 um, was still having splits. That is no splits. So, I mean, that tells you the power of the anti-impact 
resin that after all this time, still no splits. I digress. It still was a little fragile. I think, well, I don't know. I might try it for uh, hair, hair and stuff. Maybe stuff that needs to be a little bit more flexible. Maybe that's what I do need to try. Um, that on I was giving it a rough time because I couldn't do this but in fairness this was a rough design from the get-go so maybe there's something there maybe I can go ahead and still um, use that flexible resin for things like my head sleeves and stuff because um, it might actually be a little too too rigid still with the other stuff and maybe for hair I don't know I get nervous knowing that that stuff has caused splits and things before but anyway so here we have uh, this arm with the, the supports on it. So. Anyway, so here's the one the user suggested resin mix. And I think it's by far my favorite of it. So um, he was saying that his was get stiff over time. This one's gotten kind of a little stiff, but um, I also don't want it to be too loosey-goosey. So um, it's actually perfect in that regards for me. Like it's not falling still not falling you know this stays in place where I put it they wrist that everything like I didn't have to like you know tweak it or push too hard or anything to get um, this stuff to, to twist it just was it just stayed nice and smooth the whole time it's been nice and smooth so um, yeah there might be something to using my Old flex with anti impact for um, sleeves and maybe hair, you know, there might be an extra level of that. But I think things that if I need it to be sure to function and be sure to not rip and whatever, like the hair is not going to rip because you're not shoving things into the hair, if that makes sense. So that wouldn't rip. But the sleeves, if they rip, it, it still functions. It doesn't stop functioning because it tore. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I'd say this anti-impact resin is the next level stuff. It is the stuff that's going to get us to finally be able to 3D print toys. The next issue though, as far as that's concerned, is the amount of effort that it took to make this. The heating, all that stuff, to like be able to put this together. I mean, I guess you'd probably have a bowl of hot water and you just go, you know, snap it together, right? That's probably the, the fastest way. It's easier than what I was doing, but um, there's just not a way to make this into a whole action figure and sell it for 30 bucks like it would it would cost way more in time way more not way more in resin but way more in time and people seem to like there's like that that line of like what they're willing to spend and uh i don't think people are willing to spend more than uh 30 on a basic buck that isn't even skin colored right so uh, I don't think it's the end-all be-all it might be good for boutique toys so if you said Joel I want a completely custom action figure and I'll pay X whatever large amount of money because it's gonna be a one-off it's gonna be only for me okay that might be that might be the way we we approach this but this is not going to be mass market by any means um, so that's just forewarning into that regards. So I do see that they keep doing new stuff with injection mold machines allowing you, well, one is allowing you to 3D print your molds, which would be fantastic. So if if that can work well um, and hold up to the heat of it and everything for, for more than, you know, five uses, like it needs to be able to do it for 100 plus or something. Like that resin gets expensive too. So you don't want to like have a, a resin that you got expensive like breaking after like three once again it's just not going to be um, a fruitful endeavor so always always looking forward and always working my way there but at the very least i can prototype completely so prototyping purposes fantastic we can prototype completely and it'll work great and uh, i did um post my settings on youtube as well so if you were curious how i uh my settings for printing then uh you found in there. So it's 6040 anti impact and TH72. And uh, I like it a lot. So I uh, hope that you guys have good results and that we can 
we can uh, take this hobby to the next level, you know? Later, guys.